Hello, everyone, and welcome to Tea Time with Lady D. My name is Deveva, and would like to welcome Elena from Art of Hats. Welcome Hi, guys. Thanks for joining us again. It's a pleasure seeing you. And we're joining together uh, over tea time, right? It's virtually. So we're still <laughs> at some point going to meet in person, but for now, <laughs> at least virtually. There will be time, yes. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to, so I'd love to share, you know, you're, you are a local business here in the Virginia area. Mm -hmm. And I'm just you to share about your company you know what what type of services and I know that we've talked about workshops before if you'd like to start with that and then we've had several questions regarding um, what hats are appropriate for different types of events and how to wear them mm -hmm. so uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later sure uh hi everybody uh so I'm Elena Whitman and I have a small millinery business Millinery is the uh, art of making hats, and that's how I call my company, Art of Hats. Uh, I'm on the Facebook on the Art of Hats, and also on the Instagram, Art of Hats, all together. And I make hats, I do presentations about the hats, about the millinery, history of hats, proper etiquette of hats, how to wear a hat, where to wear a hat, everything hat related. And I also do um, what we call millinery therapy workshops, which are private classes where ladies um, and gentlemen sometimes get together and we make hats and just enjoy ourselves and bring up the creativity, relax. It is, it is really therapy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen that um, I've been following you online and there's all types of different locations and mm -hmm. it's making, and um, you also talk about the history, correct? Of, yes, um, the, the presentations hat. are very, very popular, actually, because um, people don't really know that much about millinery. Some people don't even know the word millinery till, till, till they met me. Mm -hmm. And I just like sharing my knowledge and doing some, you know, head propaganda in the area. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it is very cool, yes. Yeah, I honestly, um, like you had mentioned that I hadn't heard the word of millinery or milliner probably the first time was two years ago. So it's very true. Like it's uh, something that there's a there's just a whole culture behind hats. Oh, absolutely. It's 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 great culture. It's it's full of history and traditions and all kinds of different ways and tricks. And it's 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 a lot of to know but once you start you you'll get so drawn to it like i cannot stop there is always always something new yeah imagine your because each hat it needs a box so i can imagine the space that you need you know just for four or five hats with the hat boxes it takes a lot of space but it's necessary if they're very, you know, delicate, correct, the hats? Well, um, I actually had a couple of weeks ago, um, I have a little uh, women's hat club. And a couple of weeks ago, I had the presentation, the Zoom presentation on specifically how to store your hats. And oh. yes, we were talking about boxes. We were talking about wall displays. We were talking about um, shelving. It's, it's, yeah, head storage is a separate it's area a, to talk about. Too. Talk hours and hours of different mm -hmm. parts. Yeah, in my um, house, um, I have a little studio downstairs in what my husband calls man cave, but <laughs> <laughs> we're lucky to have a very big finished basement, so we share with him and bless his heart. Yeah. So, but I, yeah, it, it, it is getting to the point where I need to start cleaning because um, I make most of my hats to order, but sometimes when I have a muse, I'll just make something for the sake of making and sometimes I'm selling them, but sometimes I cannot just, I cannot part they're like babies. I, I can imagine. That's kind of where my teacup cup collection and exactly. it's growing and growing. And the ones that I have in the back, it's usually in the cabinet, but I had to take them out to dust. Mm -hmm. And I 
flowers left over from Mother's Day, and I'm like, that looks so pretty as a background. It does. <laughs> so I just left well, it. I have mine. I actually had to buy a cabinet, especially for my teacup collection. You can see there's a um, glass, so it does not get dusty as much, but sometimes, uh -huh. yeah, you'll have to. It's yeah. the whole weekend project, so. Yeah. My dog, Chloe, is trying to join us so you can see her paws. <laughs> hi, Chloe. <laughs> Let you say hi. So let's get started. Um, so we've talked about before as far as the fascinator and um, you're wearing a fascinator now, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. So tell us a little bit about about fascinators. And I think you had mentioned before that that's more more appropriate for inside or different types of occasions. Well, uh, fascinator is um technically technically a headpiece that covers less than, uh, well, the headpiece with the base that covers less than four inches of your head, which is oh. what I have. Mm -hmm. And um, some people in millinery um, consider them um, the low part, you know, outcasts of millinery and not oh. that, new, not, not that uh, many people even like making them. I personally love fascinators. They are great for the people that, let's say, you've never wore a hat before and you have no idea where to start and you are invited to the event where the hats are mandatory or needed. You do not want to start with anything huge, huge, especially if it's like you say, if it's an inside event. Uh, a tea party or um, especially any events where you know that you're going to be sitting on the table with other people like a tea party right you do not wear anything that would be inconvenient either to you or to the people next to you mm -hmm. so this little piece it's very convenient it's very easy to put on it sits on a very thin band that you can kind of hide with your hair so i'm like you can probably even see it and they, um, I make my headband to match the client's hair. So if it's black, oh. I'll make it black or whatever color. Um, so you just see this little piece. It's very mm. easy. It's it's light. I don't even remember that I have it. Uh, yeah, yeah. And you just put it on and, and go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what I say, um, if we are to talk about the very first headpiece that people would like to purchase, uh, go with something like that. Um, it is uh, one color, does not have any frou-frou. And what I like about these pieces as well, if you can find, they're not very often, but you can find, buy the piece that you can wear on any side of the head. Like, see, it looks just as fine if I turn yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Usually, you're supposed to wear it where you part your hair, like mm -hmm. right here. But sometimes when you buy it, y you may change your hairstyle, you are not sure where you're going to wear it, you don't want to, um, especially if you buy something online, right? which I, I, I don't recommend unless it's a trusty millionaire, none of those, um, you know, made in China signs, uh, sites, D don't do that. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, see if you can buy something like this one color very simple you see i have kind of grayish dress with some pieces of different flowers so it matches my outfit and it immediately completes me right. if i want to spice it up and that's another thing about the um head pieces that are one color you can it's it's like a basic you can do whatever you want with it let's say i have something like pink and purple on my dress. So all you have to do, maybe grab yourself a couple feathers and attach them here. And, you know, feathers come in any colors you want. And there's some pink ones. So you can put it in here. And this is already, you know, it's not the saddle that it used to be. So it has a little whoop, and especially if you're going to be outside, you know, the wind is going to be blowing. And if you're going to 
do not overdo it. Like, don't try to just push everything you have yeah. in your house. But a couple of feathers are fine. Or maybe you have, like, for example, I have these butterflies. It's like see-through. You, it's basically, you can't even see it. So you can put one here. You don't even have to, uh, like, sew it on. Just put a little, uh, a little pin. Be careful not to oh, hurt yourself and make sure you're not going to lose the pin when you're wearing it. Or the butterfly flies away. <laughs> well, that's that's one, but you don't want to hurt yourself with the pin. But let's say you put the butterfly. So you're already yeah. like, telling your story, you know. I, I was it's... in the garden, I had the butterfly. And again, do not overdo it. I'd say two, three elements, no more than that. And um, let's say maybe you have something green in your... Oh, I have something, it's kind of like orangey. Mm -hmm. And I have a little piece of uh, netting, the same color. Okay. So all I have to do, just add this net here and a couple feathers. And it already looks like yeah, it was made for my dress. I love it. Yeah, so it's just a base color and then you can add... Exactly. Like and... That color can be any color. I make this in like a lot of colors. This is very popular. It's only $50. And you basically getting yourself a piece that you can play with for years to come. And it matches any outfit you can think of. Mm -hmm. And again, if with the time you change your hairstyle, well, just, you know, change it. Yeah. Um, so just real quick. So one thing about fascinators, mm -hmm. if it's a really good point. So if you could show everyone, fascinators are supposed to be on the sides, correct? Not placed in the middle on top of your head. Yeah, no. Um, like, well, see what happens if I put it this way? Yeah. I kind of yeah. look like I'm five years old. Yeah. <laughs> there, there are people who are lucky enough to have the face features that will uh, survive that. <laughs> but I really don't, never met anyone. I yeah. heard about it. But, you know, so, yeah, Fascinator goes on the side. And um, usually it's, uh, well, this one is kind of sits uh, like above my forehead but mm -hmm. sometimes you can wear them a little bit lower like this so just usually uh it's not the fascinator but let if you say uh if you have like a button hat i like my on the side and almost on my eye I one see. maybe two fingers above the bra or maybe even lower not like all the way back here. definitely not on the back definitely not here mm -hmm. So divide your, it's like 45 degrees. See, this is 90. So right here, this is where your fascinator go. Just imagine how you part your hair and right. you need to cover that part. That's where it goes. So Yeah, I had, um, ever since you told me that the last time that we had tea, I have been tilting it more. And also you were saying that you also have to kind of frame it to like the side yeah you have to make sure that if you have elements that kind of sticking out mm -hmm. the point of sticking goes even either up or either up or down because mm -hmm. it elongates your face if you have something um i don't even have anything but imagine i have this with the big feather or like a lot of something and I would put it in a way that that element will be sticking out right it makes your face larger immediately visually so and you don't need my head to look any bigger than it is already well yes no, nobody does it's just <laughs> not it's the way our the human head is Created, I want to say, or made, it has to be in this way. And that's how we as humans used to, you know, looking at. So if you have something sticking out, 
that immediately creates not not only makes you i don't know larger it just makes you weird looking yeah you know it, when with the dress if you look at the history of the dresses especially women's dress you know through the history women wore all kinds of shapes and forms and now if somebody wears a dress that kind of unusual it's it's maybe not um in a in the fashion of the day but you would not be looking at that completely shocked you know because yeah. somebody somewhere already wore it but the head stays the same like there is nothing you can do with that so work with what you have and uh, frame it too yes try to stay in that frame without mm-hmm. you know going too much out yeah So I wanted to, so we, so we, that, uh, so that you could share about, you know, if you wear a larger hat as far as like a sun hat and Mm -hmm. I have a hat that I wanted to show and and you can be honest and just let me know. Okay. Let me see. Let me see. Okay. (laughs) So, um, give me just one second. I'm going to let Chloe out. So I did, so I got this a couple of years ago um, from someone local, but I've never worn it. It's not like the somewhere that you could go. So it is pretty. Um, mm-hmm. It has like Oh, there's a lot of going on there. Okay. This is the only thing. So if you were to get a hat, like I'll try it on and you'll, I don't know, does this part go in the back? Like I wasn't quite sure. So I'll put I, it. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, I kind of figured that the back would be, I mean, the ribbon would be towards the back. So, okay. So tell me your thoughts on this hat and like the size and everything. Okay. Uh, it is definitely your color. <laughs> However, this is just too much going on. Yeah. You know, it's one of those, you know, like Coco Chanel used to say, when you leave the house in the morning, look at yourself at the mirror and take one element off. I would take like half of the flowers away okay, and create the area for you. You know how you would, you put in it all now and you don't know where is front, where is back. Right. So usually the heads like that, I would prefer mine in a way that elements are sitting in a way where you immediately know how to wear it. What I would do, I would maybe leave one flower here and create a big flower bed here. So again, you're like, when you wear it tilted, you start with the little and go on the top. Um, So you will be creating instead of like, whoop, whoop, you would be creating the you know, the face that is elongated. It is very pretty. It just needs some work. Mm -hmm. Plus, like, if you would go to, let's say, inside party, it is probably too much. Mm -hmm. Because um, remember how we talked that you are had, you, you had, should stay with wind, your shoulders so this way when you turn you don't bother anyone this is almost there yeah to fix it what you can do try tilting it a little bit more and this way it's it's gonna go less this way and that way so even if you turn somebody to somebody you know it's not gonna bother so Yeah, it is very pretty. I would rearrange the flowers. I would tilt it more. I would put one little here. I would put a couple here. And I would even stick one or two underneath to meet that branch. Yeah. Yeah. So So kind of rearrange the flowers mm -hmm. um, that are on here. So yeah, yeah, yeah. flowers are really pretty. And I do love the colors of them, like the different shades of pink. Mm -hmm. It is very pretty. It just, you have to be very careful with the hat like that. And again, if you, uh, let's say, find yourself in a situation when you were invited to, let's say, garden party, and you know it's going to be outside, this this hat would be very proper 
but let's say it starts raining and you have to go inside and there's very little room, then you kind of, you know, you bothering everybody. So I actually have a hat I wanted to show you, and that's probably uh, works in the situation like you are. Um, this is uh, very light. This is straw. There's two types of straw. So, and it is big hat. So what you do, instead of wearing it straight, I put it, see how it goes in under the angle. So it is big still, let's say if you are outside, it will, well, it would probably, would not help you with the sun much, but imagine that you have something more, um, you know, a little, a little bit not as lacy as this one. Mm -hmm. So, but it goes on the, on the, on the, oh my God, under the corner, this line kind of elongates, like you're visually thinking that that's how my face goes, you know, long and, you know, skinny and just so beautiful. <laughs> and again, I am between my shoulder area. If I have to talk to someone and turn around, I'm good to do. So even if I'm sitting at the table with the close proximity to other people, um, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm okay. Yeah. And see how simple it is. There is like literally nothing yeah. because the way the straw is made, it's already looks like it's made out of lace. So you don't, don't need nothing here. Uh, um, the only thing I would recommend, maybe you need to match your dress again. Take mm -hmm. a couple flowers, like three, maybe four, no more, tiny ones. They're like, they're very small. See, like small flowers, maybe 10 times smaller than what you have on your head. And you can attach them very carefully with either a pin or maybe, you know. So, oh, one is folded. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll take this one. It's easy to attach. So let's say you have a, a dress of this color, right? Mm -hmm. So all you have to do just to find the, uh, I cannot look at myself and do it. So, ta-da! And you can maybe do one underneath there. You're, you're a little bit bigger. And you look like you basically like um, Marie Antoinette in the country house. Yeah. Very light, very easy, mm -hmm. few details. There is nothing here that, like, this head is so light and airy. This is all you need. Maybe yeah. even a couple just um, petals there and here, just kind of like you were um, under the cherry tree and, you know, the mm. petals fell on you. You don't recommend um, to glue them, correct? Because no. No. no, no, God forbid. I, <laughs> I do not like glue. I do not like glue. Um, for many reasons. Um, first, if you, let's say, that people like to use um, hot glues and all of that, it is so easy to do something wrong with your head. And once you hot glue it, you, you basically cannot fix it. I mean, you can probably tear it, but there'll be a hole. If you just sew it on, all you have to do is just you cut to thread and, you know, glue can change the color, glue can leave the spots over time, uh, glue can leave those glue lines, you know, it, it's just, um, that's not proper millinery. Um, the only way I would use glue if it, I working with material that does not take anything than glue. Um, I'll show you a piece, for example. And, uh, sorry. So I have a couple pieces. So this is again a fascinator. See the little flower thing? And it is made of Eva foam. Mm -hmm. This is something that 
And this is what I call um, a waterproof millinery. This you can swim in. You know, if you go in the party and wearing something like that, if it rains, you better hide because it's uh, gonna ruin your hat. This, mm -mm. it's it's easy. You can wash it. It's waterproof. Again, you can wear it double sided. You know, easy Same. peasy, beautiful piece. You can, you know, you can go as as big as you want. See? Very pretty. Oh, sorry. The it's color. Sorry. Very pretty too. I know, isn't it pretty? Very pretty. So this is one of those that I kind of made for sale, but now I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, I don't <laughs> like it. <laughs> and it's, these are perfect for kids. They're very light. They're again, you can wash them if you need to. You can run around with them. You can jump in a pool with them. <laughs> but these are made using glue because of the material I can I just I cannot use needle on it because it's gonna tear them apart yeah. so it's you know it's it's very nice it's like you know everything in cover if you don't see anything sticking out but you know there is there is something for everybody and even this you can dress and you know maybe put a little butterfly on it you know and the other yeah. one has yes. other mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is uh, again the perfect piece to wear. Um, to wear if you go into any kinds of party, really. Um, it can be tea party, it can be garden party. Uh, uh, this is actually very popular for weddings now, because um, especially for the bridesmaids, because I can make a many color you want. Yeah. Uh, if you need to uh, go with the bridal colors or match your bouquet, and mm -hmm. no problem. You can so cut. Um, I think, yeah. yeah, I talked about this before that fascinators, I think it's with all of these period shows and movies, mm -hmm. they brought back a lot of the fascinators now that are, people are using on their weddings for the bridal party and things like that so they are definitely back hot. and you know they never left in England but they are coming back to the United States and there is definitely an interest even uh, with a couple of years ago I can compare how how much more a um, couple of years ago the only uh, commissions that I would get would be for the racing events you know now people order for weddings, for parties, for garden parties, for tea parties. And um, yeah, there is interest and, and um, I'm so happy about that. And I, I hope that I, I bring some, you know, I put something into it. My propaganda worked, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But again, that, that, that's not scary. It, uh, I think the reason that people were afraid of the hats because when you say a hat, everybody immediately thinks something, you know, huge right. that yeah. that that does not need to be. You can start with easy hat piece again. This like you can work to wear to work. There's nothing to it, and you know, even like. something little like that. This is you know, people always wore it or a little fascinator and I love these they're so easy and again they're so customizable and you can change them in the whip you know here I have something and you know take it away and stick something different yeah and it changes the look completely and you can absolutely absolutely outfit or you, you can do you can do like a flower here too don't forget about flowers again do not overdo it I, I keep re Reminding that everybody just um, make sure that you balance space, you know, because this is a very tiny, small, dainty piece. So do not overdo it with the huge flowers or, or huge feathers. Right. But some little something will will work just fine. Fine. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Elena, for joining. Sure. Us. Always a pleasure. We could talk for hours about hats and tea and fashion. Absolutely. I have to ask you, what tea are you drinking today? 
Uh, I already did drink it. Um, it was a green tea. A green tea. Yeah, yeah. I do like green tea. Sometimes um, this time of the day, I would sometimes just do an infusion. So mm-hmm. there is no caffeine in it. But uh, usually I like to drink to uh, I make my tea mixes myself. I buy different teas and just mix them up as, as it goes. Yeah. Yeah, we all have our nice like our, our custom go to. Like I'll have people ask, like, what are your what's your favorite tea? And that's mm-hmm. you can't answer that just with one type. No, no. You're in and time of year and that sort of thing so i i don't even know sometimes what my favorite is because like i say i would mix something and i'm like oh okay i like it yeah. so <laughs> we have a batch i'll drink it and then i'll go to the next one well so. thank you elena and hopefully um, we've thank talked you for having me. or we'll be able to collaborate with a tea party combined with a diy workshop i think would be i'd love to a great experience yeah for the customers to have so oh, yeah. thank you again and um i hope to talk to you soon all right take care good night bye bye